Welcome back to America Decides. Several Kamala Harris surrogates are taking aim at former President Trump for being a little bit hesitant about committing to another presidential debate. Let's listen. He's afraid to debate her now. Do you see that? And it's not just because she's a skilled debater and a courtroom prosecutor who knows how to make the case. He's afraid to debate her because he can't defend his record. So let's bring in our political panel, Lance Trover and Zerlina Maxwell. Lance served as press secretary for Doug Burgum's presidential campaign. Zerlina is the radio host for Mornings with Zerlina on Sirius XM. So I want to play for both of you because I want to give equal time to former President Trump. What he has most recently said about this question of a presidential debate. Let's roll that. Yes, I'll probably end up debating. I think actually the debate should take place before the votes start being cast. You know, when you, I had a very good second debate with Biden. I really beat him badly. The problem was 30, 40 percent of the votes were already cast. If you're going to have a debate, you got to do it, be I think, before the votes are cast. I think it's very important that you do that. So the answer is yes, but I can also make a case for not doing it. Yes or no. And let me level set something the former president just said. You heard him say 30 or 40 percent of the vote had already been cast. Just to remind everyone, the second debate with President Biden occurred on October 15th of 2020. By that time, roughly 22 to 25 million early votes had been cast out of a total of 165 million plus cast in the election. Do the math at home. That's not 30 or 40 percent. So, Lance, do you expect former President Trump to debate? What I love about this is this is a real campaign we know because we're having a debate about debates. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> that's, right. That's the first and foremost what you need to know. Yeah, of course he is. I mean, look, the last one didn't turn out too shabby for him. Right. I would, I would, I would argue. What's I would, there to be afraid of? Well, I, I think, I think he will. The campaign has said he would. I don't know why he wouldn't debate her. Zerlina, what do you think? Look, I think that if the answer was yes, he wouldn't have said all of those words before he said yes. He would just say yes. I'm open to a debate. He agreed to a debate and. Obviously, there has been a change in the ticket, and he did well, according to Republican analysis, in that first debate. So I don't know what he's afraid of. I, 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 let me just say, I don't Go think ahead. he's afraid of anything. I actually think it's probably a pretty start, smart strategic move on their part. Look, the candidate has changed. They went, they agreed originally with a different candidate. The candidate has obviously changed. And so I think for them, it may be reworking how this next debate goes. I don't think it's a terrible strategic move on their part, but I've got to believe that he's telegraphing and the campaign has telegraphed that he's going to debate. It today. is widely perceived, Lance, that J.D. Vance has stumbled out of the gate. You agree? Look, I can't wait for the media to go and tear apart whoever Kamala Harris is going to choose as her vice presidential nominee, uh, do the same thing with her and all the things that she said. Look, this is a part of politics and what is done. You examine what's been going on. He's doing what he needs to do by going out there and explaining it and talking about what he meant. But at the same time, I hope the media and others are going to give you know, all the crazy things that she said as a California senator that are not going to play well in swing states, the same type of treatment mm -hmm. that they're giving to J.D. Vance and also for the candidate that she's going to choose as her vice presidential nominee. Does J.D. Vance's problems currently illustrate the difficulty of playing to one audience when you have to then play to a much broader national audience? I, I, this is what we have campaigns over. I mean, everybody, we have to run primaries, we have to run in other campaigns, and then you come together for a general election, and the voters are going to decide that at the end of the day. I don't, I don't think that's, that's, that's what happens in campaigns. That's what they're all about. So, look, I think at the end of the day, again, I think the scrutiny that he is getting is, I hope, what the other side is going to get as their campaign moves forward. Zerlina, childless cat ladies doesn't come up in every campaign. No, it doesn't. And as a childless cat lady myself, I have to say that people like cats, Major, and I think that this is a self-inflicted wound. If they had done proper vetting of J.D. Vance before selecting him as vice president, perhaps they would have been more prepared for this backlash. But I also would say that what you're seeing online and the energy is very organic. And so it's unfortunate for the Republican campaign that he's become a meme at this point. And there's not a lot of room for them to work with in order to change the view in young voters in particular, in their minds, that he's completely out of touch, even though he's only 39 years old. Zerlina, I like your perspective on this. I've talked to several people who, looking at this race and acknowledging the energy and the money, say, yes, the race has shifted, but it hasn't necessarily changed, meaning the fundamentals underneath the race are the same. Voters are still ticked off about inflation. They're still vexed by immigration. 
and they have, generally speaking, fond memories of the Trump presidency. Whether they felt that way at the time, they feel that way now. What's your analysis of that? It shifted, but it hasn't changed. I disagree, only because I think that one of the intangibles that we're seeing just in the last week is energy and enthusiasm. And there was a created category, as you know, called double haters, people who really dislike former President Trump and people who were not enthusiastic about President Biden, but they did not hate President Biden. They just were not excited about the options. And now they have a new option, Vice President Kamala Harris. And what you're seeing is organic enthusiasm. And this election is going to come down to the ability to mobilize your base of support. Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, they have their base of support. But I think that there are uh, there's a larger swath of voters that are gettable. And you're able to mobilize those folks, young folks, Gen Z, millennials, those 40 million or so Gen Z folks that are making these memes, they're old enough to vote now, Major, and they're going to play a major factor. So I would say that, sure, the polling is still tight. This election is still going to be very close. But the intangible energy is something that has shifted, in my opinion. Lance, you get the last word. What do you think about this? Shifted but not changed. There's no question she has given what I call a pulse bump uh, to the Democratic Party. But let's face it, 12 days ago, they had no pulse at all. So that, I mean, they had nowhere to go but up. Yeah, look, she is doing that. I suspect that will continue probably through her vice presidential pick and then the DNC. But at that point, voters are going to hone in on issues. And let's face it, she has taken some very far left positions out there that are not going to play well with swing voters. And I think the more voters hone in on those issues and take a look at that, the more that we're going to see this change up a lot. Quick answer. Who's the incumbent in this race now? <laughs> it seems to me Kamala Harris is the incumbent. Zerlina, who's the incumbent in this race? <laughs> well, I think former President Trump is the incumbent. He's the one that we all know about, and we lived through a global pandemic that he mismanaged, so we all remember what that was like. Ladies and gentlemen, trust me, that is going to be one of the sub-themes of this election. Who is the incumbent? Lance Trover, Zerlina Maxwell, thank you very much.